in Australia. A flash of emerald green on a tree twig or in the sky usually signifies a parrot. If it's going to blossom, probably a lorikeet. If it's going to the ground in search of seed, it may well be the red rumped parrot. Here's a family of red rumps. The adult male is the emerald green with a black bill and he is feeding a chick. The chicks and the female are all a dull grey green and the chicks have a brownish coloration to the bill. In fact, it's hard to even say that the chicks left the red rumps, so let's go to the ground. Here we have another family, and here we can see the emerald green of the male. And as he turned, did you see that red rump? Now what about this one, eating on some sort of herbal seed? Emerald green tail, but no red. Another one. This has a red rump. The male red rump is obvious to see. The female red rump is very subtle. But the main way to distinguish between the two sexes is that emerald green of the male. The female is grey green. The red rump parrot was first described in 1838 by John Gould. He initially grouped it with the Rosellas, but when he wrote his books on the birds of Australia, he gave it the name Sophotus hematonotus, or the blood coloured grass parrot. And this is the binomial name still in use today. The reason John Gould put it in the genus Sophotus was because all of the Sophotus group had sexual dimorphism. John Gould himself indicated in his book The Birds of Australia that he was uncertain about where the taxonomic placement of the red rump parrot should be. He himself thought it was in between ringnecks and the rosellas. Because of the sexual dimorphism he placed it with the other Sophotus birds. This includes the Mulga parrot, Golden Shouldered parrot, and at that time also the Blue Bonnets. These birds comprised the genus Sophotus because they all exhibited sexual dimorphism. Red rump parrots are grass parrots, naturally implying they eat grass or grass seed, but often it's herbaceous seed. One of the best places to find the red rump parrot is on the western side of the Darling River, in the drier parts of New South Wales. After rain, the drylands turn green, giving rise to a smorgasbord of food, and amongst many of the parrots that come to this area to feed now, we find the red rump feeding from the ground and directly from the plants. Just feeling these seeds, they are all rather prickly. It's a wonder that the birds can even eat them. To get a good view of the red rump parrot, the best place is not here, like this, at the Darling River, but on an open grass area. They do well in suburban areas in the southeast corner of Australia. For here, they have plenty of fields that are mowing and in the short mown grass seed is easier to find. Look at this male and female together, a classical example of their sexual dimorphism. Here we are again, back onto the Darling River floodplain, where there is an enormous amount of growth because of the recent rain. And look at this bird, Luminosity Plus, just standing out on the ground. As mentioned, these birds have adapted well to urbanisation. Open woodland areas in green belts of cities are ideal for the red rump parrot, and any nearby open oval with grass is a food source for them. Though these birds do extend their habitat into the dry lands of South Australia, they do prefer places where they can get water, for they do like to bath. They are such a splendid bird. I previously mentioned that the emerald green colour is either the red rump parrot or mulga parrot, but the other one to think of is a ring neck.
As mentioned earlier, it was John Gould who put this bird in the genus Sophotus in combination with other birds that showed dysmorphism. Genetic studies now show that he was right. DNA hybridization studies show that the red rump parrot is closely related to rosellas and the ringnecks, but the other birds showing sexual dimorphism that Gould thought would also be related to the red rump have now been separated out from Sophotus and placed into a new genera, Sophototelus. So the red rump is now the only representative in the genus Sophotus. The colour of parrots is distinctive. The bright colours come from carotenoids, or as we may know it, as the derivatives of vitamin A. Vitamin A we know is essential for the eye, for it protects against oxidative damage to the retina. For birds to get colour in the feathers, they need carotenoids. Carotenoids can't be synthesised. They need to be eaten in the diet. And these ingested carotenoids mix with the black melanin, forming the magical colours that we see in the Australian parrots. Coming back to the Darling River floodplain, this is a place where many of these parrots will breed from. Along the river, there are the river red gums. These trees have termite infestations, and when the branches break, there are hollows. And along this river, many parrots will breed in the hollows, including the red rump. And here you can see a pair of red rumps moving along the branches that overhang the Darling River, looking for a nesting site. Red rumps are flock birds. They fly in small groups, though on the ground there can be a huge number of birds. At takeoff, it appears that they take off with smaller groups at different times and different direction. Then at times they will come together for feeding as a mass, up to 60 birds. But this is not the case in the air. In flight, they have smaller groups. The largest group I've seen flying with synchronicity is only 15 birds. More usually, it is a smaller number, six to eight. They also, like many other parrots, call while flying. They stand outside the nest until the young are fledged. Once fledged, the adults feed them for a minimal amount of time. The young birds have to soon learn how to feed themselves. On behalf of the Plumes of Oz, I would like to thank you for watching this video and if you would like to see more of Australian birds in the wild, please subscribe to this channel and you will be notified of our next release.